Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for tonight and just this opportunity that we have to come together to hear the word of God. We ask Holy Spirit that you would anoint this hour, that you would anoint our brother as he releases what you have given to him from heaven on tonight. We open our hearts to you, Holy Spirit. We ask that you would minister revelation, new revelation to us. Open our understanding, increase knowledge in us. Give us wisdom and discernment. Let this word remain in us. And allow this word to carry us and that this word would not only be for us as hearers of it, we would share this word with others as a testimony of the truth of God's word. Thank you for everybody who's able to join tonight. And thank you for Brother Ray taking that time uh, out of his time to allow us to be a part of this presentation on tonight. We give you all the glory and all the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, praise God. Okay. So I'm just going to keep this more informal. I had planned to kind of do it like formal, like a recording, but I think uh, I feel led just uh, kind of being formal with this. And as you see, the title is Safeguarding from the Horror of Babylon. Okay. And the reason why um, I felt compelled um, to go on this title, because I, I just been seeing how a lot of church goers, even individuals I know, I've seen their, their hearts kind of wax and cold. I got a call uh, last week from a friend of mine, Mr. Friend of mine. He told me on another pastor friend of mine that uh, was just, I mean, and this guy was powerful, anointed, in, in, involved in deliverance, and uh, just up and left his wife for another woman. Mm. Oh. And uh, I'm like, well, you know, we think like, how, did, how does that happen? And in the Bible talks about in the end, people's heart will wax cold. And, you know, in Revelations, we see that uh, even John was marveling at the spirit of Babylon. And the angel, remember, the angel had a checking. Yes. So I'm just going to kind of go on with some of the notes I wrote. Then I'm going to stop and then we can kind of discuss it. But it says, um Tonight, you know, I'm just going to address the spirit of the whore of Babylon and the beast, the beast that she rides on as presented in the book of Revelations. The whore of Babylon represents the sinful world system that God will bring his judgment and wrath on, in which we see in the book of Revelations, right? Now, the beast represents the new world order system, which is formulating in real time I'm right now in the presence through the great reset. We're going to talk about the great reset of the World Economic Forum, uh, which we're going to go into. Now, why did I choose to start off with this subject? Because I believe it's important to first know where you are, right, before you can make a well-informed decision where you want to go. Hmm. You know, like I said, we all know, like with GPS, that we first must know and input what our current location, right? before we could attempt to proceed to our desired destination. So if you don't know your current location, that's simply called being lost, right? <laughs> so this is where many people are in their lives today, including a lot of the body of Christ. They want to go somewhere meaningful in life. However, they are confused where they currently are in life and have no sense of direction where they really want to go. So this is my purpose of this, ses this session. Uh, which is to lay out where we are within the biblical prophetic line today. Hmm. You know, the kingdom of darkness, you know, has its willful way, you know, misleading uh, and deceiving the lost. So what I want to do right now is like, you know, but thank God as believers, we know, let me go to, let me go to some scripture here. What does it say? Your word is a lamp to my feet. And a light to my path. Praise God. That song. Amen. 11905. So God's word has a lot to say about the times that we are living in. And I got some videos I'm gonna show you guys, some little snippets. And so, you know, because you know, God talks about you know the new world order. He does. He talks about you know this whole great reset, reset, which is we see the new world order is a regular topic, you know, currently tre trending heavily today on world news now you know 20 years ago if you mentioned the new world order 
you know, a lot of people would chuckle and kind of roll their eyes at you, believing that you were kind of naive and gullible, a conspiracy theorist. But the Great Reset is a world governmental plan to consolidate all resources, countries, finances, et cetera, into one system. And the World Economic Forum is, is what it is, is, is defined as the International Organization for Public-Private Corporation. The forum engages the foremost political, business, cultural, and other leaders of society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. Okay, so as I write this in 2022, uh, we see the World Economic Forum placing front and center on their website. Let me go here. See, you see that World Economic Forum? Mm -hmm. This is, and then we see this is the, it's, they're talking about the Great Reset, and we're going to go to one of the videos that's going to kind of explain this. And you know, see why this is important. Now is a great time for the Great Recess. So, and uh, let me let me just go to one of the videos here. The pandemic has radically changed the world as we know it. And the actions we take today as we work to recover will define our generation. Now is the time to think what history would say about this crisis. 2020 has been challenging on a lot of levels, as economic, environmental and societal frailties have been laid bare. But it's also proved that when we need to, we can act rapidly and restructure our lives. The recovery from the pandemic is an opportunity. We can see rays of hope in the form of a vaccine, but there is no vaccine for the planet. Nature needs a bailout. You don't want to go back to the status quo that you had before simply because it was the status quo that got us here. With everything falling apart, we can reshape the world in ways we couldn't before. Ways that better address so many of the challenges we face. And that's why so many are calling for a great reset. A great reset? That sounds more like buzzword bingo masking some nefarious plan for world domination. Hands up, this kind of slogan hasn't gone down well. But all we really want to say is that we all have an opportunity to build a better world. And it's not surprising that people who've been disenfranchised by a broken system and pushed even further by the pandemic will suspect global leaders of conspiracy. But the world's not that simple. Every one of us has differing priorities, values, and ideas. That's part of why solutions are so hard to come by and why we all need to be involved in the decision-making. Because whether it's politicians, CEOs, academics, activists, or you, we're all about getting people together, even those you may not like, to sit down at the table and develop solutions that work for all of us. But... Having enormous trust between the private sector and the public sector for this to actually work. That trust is hard to come by. It's time for people to work together, listen to each other and build this trust so we can move towards a better world. And we really need one. Because while the pandemic affects us all, it's clear it affects some more than others. The first people who are hit are the people at the front, those who are vulnerable. It is those on the front line who take it first. And that is simply unacceptable. See, at the start of 2020, 1% of the world's population owned 44% of the wealth. And since the start of the pandemic, billionaires have increased theirs by more than 25%, whilst 150 million people fell back into extreme poverty. And with climate change set to dwarf the damage caused by the pandemic, the message from 2020 should be abundantly clear. Capitalism, as we know it, is dead. This obsession that we have had with maximizing profits for shareholders alone has led to incredible inequality and a planetary emergency. But no one can do this alone, and top-down approaches won't get us anywhere, because everything we've learned in our work has shown us that diverse voices lead to better results. And it's for these reasons that the forum talks about something called stakeholder capitalism, which would shift businesses away from just profit. Because if we want to change where the focus of our recovery will go, then we need a new dashboard for the new economy. And that needs to encompass people, planet, prosperity and institutions. Giving people a real stake in the economy and putting well-being before growth. And that's all about getting the right people in the right place at the right time.
we must rebuild our relationship with nature for the survival of the peoples and our planet. We have a window of time which is closing and we need everybody who cares to get together and find solutions now. Okay. You guys see what's going on there? You know, they're using um, a crisis, right? And they're even admitting it. That's why they need the pandemic. Uh, they, they're using like the, uh, even um, climate change and everything like that to act. You know, because like I said, you know, even our constitution in emergency situations, that's a loophole where you can be intrusive on people's rights and things of like that. You know, that's how, you know, you take away people's bills of rights and you can implement all this surveillance because you're saying it's an emergency. That's why they're using this pandemic, uh, you know, in a way to, uh, like I said, consolidate, you know, all the countries together because we know that's like that's what the new world order is all about the 10 kingdoms the beast that this um a whore is riding on the bible talks about you know she's riding on this beast with 10 horns and that's that represents the new world order the 10 kingdoms so anybody familiar with the great reset can you hear me yeah yeah anybody familiar with that is it just mm -hmm. the great reset just the whole plan that they've had all along for just the new world order is that the yeah, well, that, yeah that? that's part of it and you'll see okay. in their language they're using new world order yeah that's right and they want one currency and so uh -huh. what they're trying to do is they're trying to crash the economy right now you know the great reset that's why you see uh at this time um you got the federal reserve buying up all the house deeds right people are like wonder why are they buying up all the house deeds and they even say what they want to do is they want to take private property because what they're saying now, because it's pandemic, people can't afford it. And, you know, um, you got landlords raising rent. So we need to take control. And they're doing this in some countries where they're legislating to the point where they are taking um, they're, they're taking other people's they're taking property right now. And what they're going to do is at least it back out to the public. You see, so they could have total control. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and that's what the, you know, the, we look at the Freemasons, you know, what is their, slogan? <laughs> you know, the, their slogan is what? Um, uh, order out of chaos. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you create enough chaos, people want order. Okay. So, you see, this is where we're at right now, you know, and I'm, I'm going to show you, it's like what they're trying to do is they're trying to, create the prototype. China is actually the prototype of surveillance of what they're mm -hmm. trying. And they're doing that. They're doing that step by step in America. I'm just going to show you a real, can I show you a real quick video of China, what's going on in China that, you know, people actually have a social credit score. Yeah. It's been happening a while. Can you believe that? Yeah. It's, wow. um, I mean, you won't even be able to travel on a subway. Like you get a, a ticket for jaywalking. They got the fastest facial recognition you know in like i said in the world and we're implementing that technology right now and yeah. when you talk about when they're trying to mandate the uh, mark of the beast this is the type of technology they're gonna they're gonna need and see this is right before our eyes and people are just kind of you know they got all these other issues going on so people are paying attention to that and uh, this stuff is like right under our nose and people don't understand man this is biblical prophecy happening right now let, let me go over to this um, in, into China real quick. I apologize. I'm, I'm going to learn how to organize this better. You're fine. Yeah. Here we go. This is of 1.4 billion Chinese. Here we go. Imagine a world where everything you do, from meeting your friends to using a public toilet, is recorded. Based on your actions, ranging from what you buy to where you go, you are given a score similar to the way you rate an Uber drive. If the government believes what you do is socially beneficial, the score will increase, and if not, the score will decrease. If you critique the government, buy alcohol or play games, your score decreases. And when your score is low, you won't be allowed to travel, your children would be barred from applying to high school, you would be fired from your job, and the best part, you would be publicly shamed. This dystopian future 
future is a reality of today's China. According to People's Daily, China's facial recognition system has become so advanced that it can scan the faces of 1.4 billion Chinese citizens in just a second. After the arrival of the internet in China in 1994, it became a very critical channel of communication for Chinese citizens. In a place where speech and access to information were heavily restricted, the internet became a medium where people could find uncensored news, speak their minds and even organize protests. However, as time passed, the authorities found a way to block the free flow of information and use the internet for their benefit. Within a decade, they built an extensive infrastructure of surveillance combined with cutting-edge technologies. With the help of it, they tracked those who spoke against the government and they were subsequently arrested or intimidated. Things worsened under Xi's era when a ruling was made by Supreme People's Court in September 2013. According to it, a person could face a prison for three years for posting comments that spread rumors and are deemed to be defamatory by the authorities. Soon, the state media revealed that the government had hired more than two million individuals as microblog monitors to report on online postings to official censors. In 2016, a cybersecurity law was passed which further facilitated state control on the internet. Companies like Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu were required to censor prohibited content to reduce the anonymity of people on the internet. They were instructed to ask people their real name with proof during registration. During the same period, the Chinese government was also working on Project Skynet. Skynet is a mass surveillance system that was created in 2005. However, the government revealed its existence in 2013, when it had already installed a network of 20 million cameras across the country. By 2019, this number increased from 20 million to 200 million. Authorities claim that this network allows them to track criminals within minutes and keep the public safe. But the question is, who will save the public from the government? In the name of fighting terrorism, members of predominantly Muslim ethnic groups located in the northwestern part of China are forced to give their biometric data like photos, fingerprints, DNA, blood and voice samples. Police then flag certain behaviors like growing a beard, leaving their house via a back door or visiting the mosque and those who do such things are red flagged by the system and interrogated by police, wrongly accused and put in prison camps. In some cases, authorities have installed surveillance cameras inside the homes of minority communities. The algorithms used in the surveillance network have become so good that they can detect the number of people in the frame, their gender, ethnicity and age in real time. Moreover, they can identify the person by their style of walking when under 50 meters of distance from the camera. The United States and other countries also use some of the same techniques, but their use is limited to track terrorists or drug lords. But Chinese authorities want to use them to track everybody. Thanks to the high demand for surveillance cameras by the Chinese government, it has become a booming industry. Chinese government wants a better and efficient surveillance system, and companies want to secure big government contracts. So to get the contracts, companies are constantly improving their tech, ultimately benefiting fitting the government efforts of making mass surveillance more efficient. But this is not limited to the camera on the streets. Your face is scanned in restaurants to give you meal recommendations. You can pay while shopping through face scan. And if you want to use toilet paper in public toilets, you guessed it, your face will be scanned first and then the toilet paper will be dispensed through a machine. Surprisingly, according to the Times, the personal data of millions of people on the government servers was unprotected by even basic security measures. And they also found that private contractors and middlemen had wide access to personal data collected by the Chinese government. Coming back to cyber surveillance. Whatever you do online is being recorded. From your financial transactions to messages, everything is intercepted by Chinese authorities. Let's take the example of WeChat. WeChat started as a messaging app. Then it transformed into Chinese Facebook, and then it added a ride-hailing service similar to Uber to its platform, and then it added banking services to its platform, and now you can use it as an ID. If you're living in China, you can file for divorce through this app. This will make your life very convenient, but at the same time, it also becomes very convenient for state security to track you. To combat message interceptions, they talk through emojis. A half-fallen rose means someone has been arrested. A dark moon means they are going to prison camps. A sun emoji means they are alive, and a flower means they have been released. Now combine cyber surveillance with Skynet, you get unimaginable power and control over 16% of the world's population. China calls it the social credit system. Whatever you do from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed is recorded. Based on your actions, your social credit score increases or decreases. If you praise the government publicly, donate blood, help the poor, engage in charity work, etc., your score increases. If your score is high, you'll get tax breaks, free gym, 
preference at hospitals, and if you do something which is considered to be wrongful by the government, the opposite happens. Due to the social credit system, people fail to look at the bigger picture as they are constantly busy improving their scores to avail the benefits which come with it. The ratings for every Chinese citizen are publicly available, and anyone can see them, completely eradicating their privacy and ruining their social life. If you raise your voice against the government, your score would decrease, and other people wouldn't know why your score is low. They might think it's low because you did something wrong, so they'd want to stay away from you. Soon, due to the fear of lower ratings and what others would think about them, similar to what happens on social media, citizens will refrain from any kind of independent expression, both on social media and real life, as this might lead to lower ratings, leading to a denial of basic human rights for them. The complete eradication of privacy helps the authorities to quash movements and protests against the government before they even start. According to many, China's mass surveillance is a grave new threat to freedom of expression and a violation of fundamental human rights. What do y'all think about that? I think that's the direction we're heading in. Yeah. I mean, the technology's here. Yeah. Yeah. But- yeah. And the Bible says that even the elite, uh, you know, in the last days will be deceived. Um, You know, those that are in the intellect will be deceived. That's why we talk about, you know, like we're saying before, a lot of people's heart, you know, the Bible prophesied that would wax cold Mm -hmm. in in the end. And, um, you know, we talk about, I mean, like you say, you you got CERN uh, out there that, they're thinning the veil of the spirit realm. There's a, a, a I'm telling you, there's a thicker, dark, darker uh, demonic presence now because of all the rituals and all these abortions that have happened. They do these abortions because it increases what they call the, a demonic anointing, in, you know, like I said, in, in witchcraft, you know, in Satanism. So every time they pass a new bill, like transgender bill, that thins the veil, you know, they believe. And brings, you know, uh, like it makes it easy for witches to do witchcraft and put spells on to people. That's why as Christians, we got to be praying more, even fasting more and everything like that because of that. And it's like, how do we keep our discernment high? Because like I said, you know, people that have low discernment, they're falling for this. We see Christians right now that they're getting involved in movements advocating abortion. You know, getting behind politicians. I'm like, what's going on? How can you justify this? They're, they're, they're blinded. You know, getting involved in these political agendas that are back in transgender and everything else like that. It's like, how is how's that happening? And that's because of low discernment. So in all this, I'm saying, I'm not just trying to bring this up just to kind of just uh, show that. I mean, most of everybody knows that we see biblical prophecy before, but I see uh, people getting sucked in. Just like that interview, the uh, individual I was telling you about that I discovered this week, and I'm like, man, this guy was involved in deliverance and everything. He got sucked in, you know, in, you know to with, with another woman, and then you know he he presently said he said, uh, well, I had a dream, my wife was cheating on me, just a dream, and she and she wasn't, and then from there, uh, he had already got involved with another woman, and. But like I said, it's so easy. You got that. What have got the whore of Babylon? And what does the whore of Babylon represent? We talk about the worldly system. And the Bible talks about, and we'll go over those scriptures, that people will be intoxicated with her wine. And there's all types of different types of wine. There's wine of not just sexual perversion. There's wine of greed. And uh, there's wine of jealousy. Um, the wine of coveting. All types of different types of wine that people are getting sucked into. And when you get sucked into these type of, and you get intoxicated, that's why 1 Peter 5, 8 says that what? You know, be sober-minded, right? Because the devil is roaring around like a lion, seeing who he can devour. And when, because when you get intoxicated, what happens to your discernment? It goes down, right? It goes low. And, you know, we talk about some of the things that uh, lower discernment, you know, it's like there's three main things, unrepentant sin unforgiveness right and and the cares of the world that right there will clutter your discernment and so we got all these things happening because you have a lot of believers they're looking at this and they're like okay yeah i see that but you know who's playing who's playing tonight in the nba right 
You know, what, what, what's Kim Kardashian doing? They, they're so caught up with all the other cares of the world. The discernment is so low. This stuff that we're seeing, those, those videos, that should alert us. My gosh, this is happening. The technology is yeah. here. They're bringing forth this one world government. I mean, like I said, they're already talking about a one currency, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, and that, that's about to happen, you know? A, a one world currency. I mean, we're in a situation now where it's like, World War III couldn't kick off. So, I mean, it's time now that, you know, we just stay on our post. And what is our post? Our post is what? The, it's the Great Commission, right? To win souls. But see, you know, a lot of times when you got all this stuff going on, all this entertainment, and you got, and if you're not praying, it's like we got this, uh, all this stuff is coming into the atmosphere stronger than ever. You know, we got even, they're talking about that CERN. We talked about CERN, how it's opening up portals. And they're saying, even the president of CERN is saying they're opening up portals and that entities are coming in. That's from the president of CERN, you oh, see? And, and this stuff is invading. I mean, you know, like I said, when you see them in the Super Bowl doing these rituals, people think that's it. No, that's thinning the veil. When, when you're doing a ritual like that in front of millions of people, that is demonic power. That's thinning the veil. That makes it a lot easier for witches and warlocks to put spells. So as Christians, man, it's like that's why we see the warfare intensifying, right? But then we see all this other, you know, all these other little distractions. And you know, like I said, I mean, he's just putting up all these little bells and whistles everywhere to get our focus right off our post of what we're supposed to be doing. You know, Brother Ray, when you were mentioning CERN, um, my mind just went back to a lot of the movies that were out and maybe some that are out right now. Yeah. Where people are experimenting with things that they don't understand. There it is. That's and, right. and opening up stuff right. that they cannot control. That's right. And that's what CERN reminds me of and whatever else is out there that's doing the same thing. Yeah, they're calling the police saying that they are seeing when they're running that machine. They, they have they're getting calls after calls, even from police are saying people are saying they're seeing demonic spirits. Hmm. Just weren't weren't they police. seeing like 50 foot giants, Ray? Yeah, 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 exactly. One of them said they the people are saying they're seeing giants because, like I said, these are principalities coming through that realm. You know, and like I said, they're saying that they're letting in uh, dark energy, right? Oh, dark matter. Sense. And if you look in Freemasonry books, you know, you look at like real magicians, not illusionists, real magicians. You know, you see like pigeons coming out of hats. There, there are people that have real pigeons that will manifest, come out of hat. You know how that pigeons created? Dark matter. And this is in the Freemason books where you actually make a covenant with a demon. And the demon gives you magical power. Wow. If you look at a, a good hey. example is Chris Angel. Yeah. yeah. You have an elephant just appear in the room. A little el elephant would just appear in the room. And that, that elephant is made out of dark matter. You, you know what? The, what I, I, I saw through scripture today was crazy, Ray. Um, there was a scripture I talked about the... I think it was the dragon or the beast will give power, will give breath to the image. Like, and that word breath, I gotta right. look it up in Greek to just see what it is, but it's obviously talking about life. Right. Well, right. so that's right. kind of crazy. There is scripture to back up that what you were saying. There is scripture that talks about yeah. giving yeah. life. It's, it's kind of, I gotta look into it some more. I'm just letting you know. That's why I, it's funny you saying that. Well, that's what someone <laughs> is trying to do. They're trying to, because uh, what they say is that. And this is what scientists say. They say, like, our material right here, we have dark matter of our material, of all of our particles in another realm. They say it's a duplicate, a replicate wow. in another realm. And what, what they do is they make covenants with demons, dark, and open up those portals to go in and be able to manipulate that dark matter. If you look at real magicians, they will turn, you know, they're, they're mocking Jesus by turning water into wine. Have you ever have you seen those videos like in China where they're actually doing that? And they're doing all the time. They're having bread. The guy's pulling a breadstick out of his out of his hand. 
They got these, you know, demonic type symbols and stuff like that. That's dark matter. You know, and, and you got even magicians, real They're magicians, I'm not illusionists, I'm talking about magicians, but uh, that, that are doing these type of things, you know, and, and bringing forth these demonic, what they call demonic miracles, you know. There, I think there was a lady that, that was doing comedian thing and then she hit her head. I don't know if Kironi and um, Tony oh, Buck, I've seen that. Yeah, like she hit her. She hit her head. She was, she was mocking God. I think. I don't yeah, know. I remember. I seen that. Yeah, that was, that was a trip. Yeah. What happened to her head? Well, she was head. mocking God and just. I think I forgot she fell off her chair or something right after she mocked God. But uh, but like I said, we're seeing that getting more and more prevalent, and it's like we got to stay tuned up. You know, because there's all this demonic frequencies, all this demonic static. And it's like when we wake up in the morning, the Lord has told me, you have to get into praise and worship to clear the airwaves and worship. Oh, okay. You know, I, I was looking at one of the kings in the Old Testament. What was his name? He was a, he was a um, what is it? Zora, but they said he hired, even David, they would hire magician, uh, not, not magician, musicians, and they would hire praise and worship they would hire them to pray to just to clear the airwaves right to, 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 to set forth the anointing the glory of God so they could hear from God because Ephesians 2 says what Satan is what the prince of the air you see so a lot of times people are going right into prayer without and, and see we're not we're living in another time than five years ago than Amen. And so when you when, when you're going into prayer it is essential. It's vital that you go into praise and worship. Amen. Because if you just go in all heavy with all this demonic static, you, you might not hear from God. You might get a pick up a, you know, because the Bible says, you know, we have to test the spirits. Just like that's why we're getting all this bad prophecy now. Why is that? Because you're getting the, the getting the bad prophecy. The Bible says test the spirits. You, you could pick it. You know, you could pick up a wrong utterance. You can pick up a wrong utterance and start speaking it out. Like I said, if you, if, like I said, if, if the airways aren't clear, that's why the Bible says, even in Corinthians, it says what one will prophesy and two will judge because, you know, they knew that there can be error with prophets. If your prayer life ain't right, if you're holding on to the cares of the world, you know, if, if there's contamination in your heart, if your heart's not clean, you know, the enemy could send you a wrong utterance and you pick that up. And that's how come you, you got all these wrong utterances during the Trump election. You know, because people were kind of you had all these cares of the world and people were demanding them to prophesy right there on the spot. And that's not how the spirit of God works. But see, if, if they're as susceptible that the devil will send the utterance, they pick it up. And that's why the Bible said it, if he wouldn't tell us to test the spirits. Right. If the devil couldn't emulate a spirit right why would you need to test it you test it what he said test it through the holy spirit but it's so easy and even we see that even jeremiah god was saying that these prophets are what prophesying they're trying to please the king they are prophesying from and they're real prophets but they're prophesying from their own heart they're prophesying with the wrong utterance because their heart was not clean and see we got to be careful with that because sometimes you know we pray and sometimes you know some of us translate what we're praying but if we have heaviness right if there's a lot of heaviness cares of the world and we haven't asked the lord to search our heart we're trying to search our mind and our heart with our own intellect lean on our own understanding we can easily and i've done it you could pick up a wrong utterance and then start speaking out something and, and really believe in it's god sincerely and it's not of god you know and it's like, or picking up dreams that are not of God. Like the, the man I was telling you about, uh, a pastor friend of mine picked up a dream. Oh, my wife is cheating on me. I had a dream. And no evidence, no circumstantial evidence left her off of a dream. Then got with another woman. Hmm. You see, bait, why? Because the utterance, he didn't, they didn't, couldn't test it. Because like I said, if you're dealing with your prayer life is not there, you're not reading the word. Because what does the Bible say? Your word has what? Cleansed me, right? The word cleanses us. It's like we got to go through a, it's like more than ever, we have to go through a cleansing process in the morning. 
through praise and worship, but through reading the word. Then we go to the Lord and be still. And then when you're still, what does he do? He establishes our thoughts. He'll, out of our belly will flow rivers of living water. Then we pick up a good utterance. Because if you just go there and you got all the static and all this stuff and all these cares of the world, oh, I'm going to you, God. Oh, I got an utterance. And you try to speak it and you get a wrong utterance. That can be real detrimental to your walk. You know, or someone else's walk. Because you could speak into someone else's life and be totally wrong. And that's what we see that's happening. I'm seeing more and more where you're getting a lot of bad prophecy. And not saying that these people don't have a prophetic gift. Some of them really do. Right? But they're being, it's, it's being deceived. Because like I said, they don't understand the times that we're living in right now. I mean, the, the whore of Babylon, I mean, that's... That's a powerful spirit. When John went into time and he marveled, at, the Bible says he marveled, admired, the Bible said admired her and the angel was like, what you doing? Why are you marveling her? He, he, he checked John real quick, John, oh, you know? But, but see, that's how seductive that spirit is. You see? And I, I think that they put that in there to show us, hey, it, it's so easy. And it's not about gender. Whore of Babylon has nothing to do with male and female. It's just a spirit that's really enticing, you know. It can, it can entice people just to have a thirst, just to want to get rich, you know. And, and then you just start thirsting after that and lusting after wealth or lusting after, you know, fame. Or, you know, even lusting, even having a ministry where you're lusting to, for position, things of that sort. I mean, that, you know, it, it, it could look real spiritual and be very demonic. So that's why we got to ask the Lord to clean our heart because see, all these things are happening right now. And see, when we're in the spirit, we should be in tune to these things and be able to say when we see something on TV or video, because some people just watch it. Oh, oh, OK, that's pretty interesting. Oh, that's pretty cool. I, no, that's it's like the Holy Spirit should be speaking to you. Like, do you see what's happening? Can you align and parallel this with Revelation 17, Revelation 18? Do you see what's happening? Do you understand the signs? that I spoke about, that I prophesied to you, you understand this is real time right now? You see? So it's like, and these things are happening daily right now. And it's like, we, and then I'm not saying we should walk around in fear. No, we don't walk around in fear. But like I said, we got to trust in the Lord, lean not on our own understanding, right? Acknowledge him. And, I, and the Lord's been telling me to do it every day. Even when I go to the store, the Lord said, acknowledge me. I'll go to Trader Joe's. Lord, I'm acknowledging you. Go to Trader Joe's. Establish my thoughts. And he'll tell me what to buy. What I know that sounds silly. Amen. No, it's not silly. Yeah, that, that sounds, mm -hmm. sounds silly. But even when I go to pick up my kids from school, Lord, I'm acknowledging you going to the school right now. I'm acknowledging you. And sometimes he might lead us to go talk to someone. He said, what do you say? Acknowledging me in some of my ways or all my ways? Oh. You see? That, 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 that those little things sometimes that it's so easy to miss that we think maybe is not significant in all our ways, you know? Where should I go eat, Lord? Establish my thoughts. Lead me, you know? John 7, 38, give me an utterance or whatever. You know, sometimes I'll ask the Lord, do you, do you want me to go to this coffee shop or that coffee shop? And I had this uh, one guy, I went over to this coffee shop and it was this, um, I was telling um Tom about it, a guy named Dan Moore. And someone just told me, go to this coffee shop. I really wanted to go to this coffee shop. And I was telling the Lord, Lord, I want to go to this coffee shop in Dallas. He said, no, go to the coffee shop in Frisco. And I'm having a conversation. And, and I said, okay, I'm going to go to Frisco. I go to Frisco and this, this other brother, Christian, Christian brother, white, uh, older white guy, multi-millionaire dude, but he was, I mean, just a, a servant heart. He said, the Holy Spirit just told me to come over here and talk to you. And he said, and I just, he said, you know, I just introduced myself. He said, man, and we started talking about prison. Meeting. He said, can you pray for me? He said, I got a situation going on in my company. A vice president here is acting up and I don't think she's of God. Can you pray? I need to know how to deal with this. And then right when we prayed, he gets on the phone with her and just, he said, thank you. You know, but it was just, you know, real time. So we developed a friendship like that, you know, and, um, but it, it happens all the time. I go just different places. I said, Lord, what coffee shop do you want me to go to? And it'll be somebody there. It just, 
that that either needs a prayer request or uh, it, it's weird. And they'll be saying the same thing. Man, some just told me to come here. I know this is the Holy Spirit. And it, we're just making these ministry connections. So it's like the Lord saying in all our ways and be aware of these things, you know, and I'm not saying that we should just be, um, you know, just obsessed with the news and all this other stuff. But I'm saying when things like this are happening, World Economic Forum, and you got people aren't talking about this in church. That, you know, I mean, let me show you. Let me just show you uh, real quick what's going on here. Um, but see, you see this. This is this was on. This is a secular site. Okay, United Nations. What does that say? New World Order. New World Order. The people are like, whoa. I mean, and, and this is on all types of stuff. They're saying this. Do you, you, do you remember in that you said this in the 90s or 80s? They look at you like you're crazy. They're laughing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Look what Newsweek. This is in March. New World Order. <laughs> that was in that news. That's World. this month. That's Newsweek. Oh, wow. That was this Newsweek. month? Yes. And see how subtle it is? Yeah. And see, too. I'll be seeing it. Yeah. I, I, I mean, back in the day, Christians were talking about this in the 80s and 90s. And, all, and people are like, man, they're crazy Christians, right? Now it's out there. You don't hear Christians talking about it. <laughs> that was right there. And now you don't hear no Christians. Christians are already talking about it. Yeah, okay, I hear you. Anyway, you know, king playing tonight, right? Now look at this. Club of Rome, right? You guys are familiar with the Club of Rome? Club of Rome is like the World Economic Forum, right? You see this? The Are you able to make it bigger? Oh yeah, yeah. Let me do, let me do that. Hold on. Um, oh, okay, great. Do you see this? Club of Rome. Now, now our president it belongs. To the, I mean, all the major politicians around the world. And to, look at this. This is from the UN. Do you see this? Wow. Ten, they they divide, they've already have a plan to divide the world into what? Ten kingdoms. Do you see this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, this is real. <laughs> wow. Including Russia and Latin America. And development goals. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is this now. This is from their side. This is what they're saying. Ten. And how many horns are there on the beast that the horns yes. are in on? And what, what and what the Bible say? He says what? Um, Let's go to that one scripture. Uh, let's just read this. And there came one of the seven angels, just to display this for the foundation, which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, come hither. This is in Revelations. I will show unto the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So it carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon scarlet colored beasts full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and what does it say? And, and ten more. horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple. You know, I thought it was interesting that Kamala Harris was arrayed in purple when she was inaugurated, right? And she had pearls on. Check this out. And scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. You, you know, I noticed that that a lot of black women, including what I'm related to, they, they you know, on the day that she was inaugurated, they, they all put out like um, Texas telling, uh, you know, telling their friends to dress in purple and wear pearls. You know, even my little Jenny, she was dressed. I was like, oh, my gosh. They tried to dress her up in purple and pearls. And the world was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now, check this out. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of saints and the blood of Mars of Jesus. And when I saw her, this is John talking, I wondered with great admiration. You see, and even like I said, people gotta be careful watching. I mean, 
Have you ever noticed when you like you be on Facebook and a video comes on and it will just suck you into the next video and it can try to suck you into the next video? Mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm saying? That's all planned by design. And the angel said unto me, where did thou marvel? See, the angel checked him. And I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the, be the beast that carried her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. Revelation 17, 7. Remember I told you about that one guy that, that he was on that reality show. He was, they were about to give him a reality show. He had been on the Steve Harvey show. He called for prayer. Multi-millionaire pilot. Mm -hmm. And he said he was about to make this deal uh, for a, a million dollar contract to do this house flipping show. And he said he was involved with Tony. Was it Tony Evans? No, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins. You know, that, that, you know, the guru that teaches, you know, self-help and everything like that. And he says, you know, he has self-help um, shows, you know, he has self-help seminars, you know, in the States. But the wealthy people like us, we go overseas where he teaches us how to open our third eye. Mm -hmm. And he showed me the websites, like these secret websites, right? But he said when he was sitting down about to make this deal, demons came through the realm. I believe it. And they took him to Facebook. They took him to Amazon. He said they were just showing me the behind the scenes, how they use sigil magic, that people could look like they're looking at one photo of a, a it could be look like an innocent photo and embedded in that photo is spells and witch, witchcraft. Wow. So when they look at it, if they're not covered by the blood, they could get sucked in. Wow. You see? But see, that's why it's so important that we have our discernment and we guard our discernment. We got to guard it and build it up, especially in these days. And I think a lot of Christians are becoming really lax thinking it's like the same, you know, same routine as it was five years ago, a couple years. It's, it's way different. It's way different. Things are very deceptive, you know, and it's like, I, I mean, I'm not sure, but I can feel the heaviness. I got to pray. A lot of times I got to pray to lift all this heaviness off and, and worship. Yeah. You know, if I don't, I'll, it, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like something's like laying me, trying to lay a blanket down sometimes. You just got to worship. And sometimes even more just to clear that out for the presence of God, the glory of God to, to come forward. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hear me on that? Yeah. So, um, but anybody has anything to say? But like I said, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Let me just go there. I get some, get some word in here. But like I said, this is Paul. I like when Paul, Paul was dealing with like a similar spirit in the Galatians, with the Galatians, kind of like the whore of Babylon. And he says, oh, foolish Galatians, who hath what bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. So he's like, man, what's wrong with you? You seen Jesus. And why are you acting like knucklehead? And that's what kind of same epidemic we, we got going on today. It's like, who has bewitched us? And there's a lot of things, when we talk, we've talked about in times past, the music, sigil magic, you got yoga. All these things are bewitching the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is just drinking it up. And you got a lot of even pastors drinking this stuff up, you know, trying to Christianize it. We're going to Christianize yoga. We're going to Christianize, you know, uh, the Democrats. You know, and, these, and I'm not saying, I, and I don't get me wrong, I believe the Republicans and Democrats, a lot of times they're working on the same side. You know what I'm saying? Because you got both, a lot of them are both Freemasons, you know? Yeah. And I'm saying we got to vote as the Spirit leads us, not by a party. Amen. That's Amen. our discernment. Because, like I said, when we talked about, you can make an ungodly covenant through your voting by strengthening the hand of the wicked, which can bring a curse on an individual. You see? So if I make a covenant with a man that is for advocating abortion and I make a covenant with him, strengthen his hand, I've come in an agreement with him. And that, that could give place to the enemy. And see, I, 
people do that without discernment. They just think, oh, it's not really a, a big deal. Our family's always voted this way or, oh, well, anyway, I don't care. You know, I'm not into politics anyway. I'll just go ahead and vote. doesn't matter. And they think it doesn't matter. And what does that do? It creates a covenant. You see, and this, this is, and, and you know, the Lord has been showing me that, you know how the Bible says the Lord chastises those who he loves, right? What scripture is that? The Lord chastises those who he loves. Um, it's in it. uh, Hebrews. Yeah, I Hebrews, think. right? Now, Hebrews? And the Lord was saying sometimes as, as, as ministers, when we're praying for somebody, now this isn't all the time, but a lot of us have been chastised. It's like God is our father, right? He loves us. So sometimes he's punished all of us. A lot of times we don't actually know what the punishment was, or sometimes there haven't been breakthroughs because God got us on restriction, right? As parents, we put our kids sometimes on restriction, right? Sometimes we'll spank them, right? Now they could be, on, let's say they're on restriction. You put your kid on restriction and one of their friends comes and tries to plead with you. Can you please come off restriction? Are you going to let them off restriction? If you put them on restriction, they deserve restriction. Like, come on, please let your daughter off restriction so I can play with her. Please, I plead with Thank you. Him. You're going to be like, no, right? Because you set them on restriction. See, that's how God is. Sometimes we can be praying for someone and they're on restriction. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or there's sometimes they're serving a little punishment and we don't even know. And, sometimes, and that's when our discernment got to come in. So Lord was saying sometimes it, it's not yet. Or maybe it's no, or maybe no, this person, just like if someone, you could be a Christian, but you commit an armed robbery and you get caught, you can't just say, well, forgive me, I don't want to serve any time. No, you don't do some time. You might get a little bit of time and some probation and get some leniency, right? But a good judge, what is he going to do? He's going to still make you do some of that, right? You know, for just, just kind of like with us. It's like we don't want to give place to the devil. Sometimes we, we could do the wrong thoughts, and a lot of times we could put punishment on ourselves. God could chastise, give place, and God will chastise us. Then we wonder why our breakthroughs aren't there. The Bible says a righteous man's prayers will of much, right? So it's like the Lord's telling us that, especially during these times when it's so heavy and there's so much deception, that we have to be very keen and very astute of, you know, the Bible, was Paul say? We're not unaware of the devil's schemes. Because, see, the devil can get us caught up in all types of legalities. Let's say a lustful thought, and we're not guarding it. Or, or, or an angry thought. Or, a, you know, just a, a jealous thought. And we think, oh, it's just a thought. No, that's, you know, we, we can be chastised for that. And then when we go to pray, our anointing is low. Or it's like there's no breakthrough. And that doesn't mean it's going to be forever, but I'm just saying... God loves us. He does chastise us. Sometimes we forget that, just like a good parent. It's like, you know, we put our kids on restrictions sometimes. Sometimes you spank them, right? Sometimes people, parents have different types of methods. But it's the same with God. And sometimes I think as Christians, we forget that. So sometimes we're like, why won't this go through? Why won't we go through? Sometimes we have to look and the Lord will show us, well, son, you've been disobedient here. You know, maybe it's your attitude in your heart, maybe not outward. But God says, I'm judging of the inward. Look at your thoughts. They haven't been pure. Now you're trying to pray for something. And yeah, you know, and I'm not saying that's just going to be like that forever. But sometimes there's a period, a waiting period, a restriction period. Then after that restriction period, then there's a breakthrough that comes through. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because sometimes we can be hitting the head. God, why aren't you doing this? And God's like, have you been watching your thought life for the last Okay, I, I, you know, son, I've got you on restriction. You haven't checked in with me. You know, or you're bad. You have that bad attitude towards your boss, and you've been wishing, you know, wishing they get fired and stuff like that. You have been praying for them. Uh, you know, I love you, but I've been. There's some punishment that you're gonna have to serve for that. And so that's why the Bible says a righteous man prayers prevail as much. It's like we gotta be more alert. And, and hold our even our thinking to a higher standard because sometimes that's when the legalities are coming through. Because a lot of times we're thinking it's just outward actions. No, it's inward. God's judging our heart. He's checking, like I said, he's looking at our heart, right?
I mean, you look even in the Bible, it says man's imaginations were wicked. Remember, God was talking about destroying man. He said their imaginations are wicked. He said that. He said their imaginations. You know, and, and sometimes we think that's that's off the grid. We don't you know, God don't have that on the grid. Yes, he does. He has our imaginations on the grid. <laughs> he has our attitudes on the grid. That's why every morning we got to clear the airways and ask the Lord to search our heart. To make sure it's class of Lord, just like David did. Psalms 51, Lord, create me a clean heart. You know, because you can't do that with your own mind. You, know, you can't do that with your mind. You can serve some of the stuff. You can get to certain levels with your own understanding. Oh, I, I forgive. I, yeah, but it takes the Holy Spirit to search your heart and he'll establish your thoughts. He'll show you the inner stuff that's in there that needs to be confessed or that needs to be cast. Sometimes it's cares. Sometimes it might not be a sin. It's just you're holding on to all these cares. And the what does the Bible says? When you hold on to the cares, what does it, it makes you what? It makes you double-minded, right? It, it splits your mind. You hold on to the cares of the world. It chokes the word of God out of your heart. That makes sense? <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay. Am I going too long? I'm sorry. I need to, I'm about to No, it. good stuff. Yeah. But I, I'm just saying, this is the Lord's been saying. He's been like, just taking us. He's like, we need, especially in these days, he's like, we need to go to another standard of holiness, you know, yeah. for, for a breakthrough. And it's like, sometimes um, we can get, I'm not saying y'all, but we can get lazy, do myself, get lazy with your thinking. And, and think, well, I'm not doing anything. I'm not, I just thought it. Or, you know, this person makes me mad, you know? Cause I've, I've had people that have done me wrong. You think, man, you know, sometimes you, you'll, you'll, you'll be thinking like, man, I, I would have said this and check, not that you're cursing, but I would just whoop, whoop, whoop. And, you know, maybe intimidate this dude real quick and just show him and you're just thinking it and you think, well, I'm a Christian. I would never do that. And God's like, you just did it. <laughs> You just did it, and you just was chastised. I'm about to chastise you, son, for that. Now you're about to yeah. go pray, and now yeah. what? Now your prayer is held up in limbo. Uh, and not all the time. We don't not, know that. Yeah, I mean, God is God is full of mercy. And you know, Brother Ray, I do like what you made, the comments you made about um, how we need to, how God is saying we need to take our worship, our praise, our time with him, to another level because as the darkness is increasing in our world, you know, in any type of war or spiritual warfare or battle that you fight in, um, when the enemy is um, increasing, yeah. you have to come up with new strategy. You got, you can't use the same form of warfare that you did five or 10 years ago. That's right. You know, you have to change your strategy and so do we as children of God. And, <laughs> I like what you're also saying. I really love when you were talking about um, getting up in the morning and having that time for praise and worship and then reading the word and then just quietly sitting before the Lord. That's really powerful, too, because we do want to posture ourselves and position ourselves to be able to hear from God. And we do want to take that time so that God can take us to that next level. I mean, God will do it. That's right. We need to position ourselves in order for God to do it. That's right. He's just waiting on us. To do our part, and he's gonna do his part. That's right. No, that's that's a, that's a good word right there. And it's like, um, you know, even our days. You know, this is why sometimes we gotta be careful with success seminars. They have a lot of good stuff in there, right? But then a lot of times, I remember being a part of these organizations. Well, what do you want? And you know, what is your five year goal? What is your two year goal? And you, you kind of develop this narcissistic mentality. You know what I'm saying? It's like. It's not for us to order our steps. It's God's that order our steps. So the Lord says, even, even during your, your things to do list, you know, if they tell you, write down a things to do list, you should write down things to do list. But before you write down your things to do list, you need to come before the Lord, worship, read his word, be still, and he will establish your thoughts. Amen. Then write your things to do list down. That's good. And I notice that when I do that, I'm more productive in my business. I'm more productive all throughout the day. But sometimes we just think, well, I, you know, my mentor told me to write down my things to do this from the night before. No, you, it, that's fine to do that, but you make sure it's the Lord establishing your thoughts. 
Because who are you to direct your own steps? Mm. You're leaning on your own understanding. You're doing what God told you not to do. <laughs> oh, I'm just, I know what to do. I, I got to do this and I got to go here and I got to go there. And I'm, I'm going to use this person and I got this person's business card. And I'm going to call him and I'm going to call that. Mm. No, you need to cast that before the Lord and say, Lord, here it is. I cast all my cares of who I should call for, with, you know, should I do this mechanic, that mechanic? Establish my thoughts, Lord. And as you be still, he will establish your thoughts. And he might even give you an utterance that comes out of your belly into an English utterance and tell you exactly what you need to do. You might get an utterance and you speak it out. If your heart's clean and, you know, with no cares, you've repented, renounced, he'll sometimes give you an utterance. Because what did Paul say? Give me the boldness to speak forth in utterance, right? In Ephesians. So, so I can speak forth the utterance boldly. You see? Then you write down your things to-do list. Because you have a lot of people, I, I got my things to lose for the whole week. I got my five-year goals, my 10-year goals. And, well, who made that goal up? I did. I just had it in my mind, in my heart. And then God, and you want God to sign off on it. God's like, I didn't, I didn't I'm gonna, you want me to sign off? <laughs> you created this. I didn't create this. But I know it's right. It has to be right because it's godly. And I'm going to serve people and I'm going to take this money and feed the hungry and do all this. And we're going to start all types of mentoring programs. That's your plans. Do you want to hear what I, my plans are for you? Well, God, I, I think I got it all down. I think I'm, you know, I, I think I think I got it figured out. You know, that's what we're saying in our actions. I think I got it figured out. And I've read all the books. I've read all the success books, been all the conferences, seminars. And uh, I got the courses. I took it down, wrote everything down. And God's like, did you get with me? Did it, are, are, are those books establishing your thoughts? Mm. Or are you allowing me to establish your thoughts? Mm. Now, I can use that content. Now, I might remind you about a book and a segment in that book to, to use that. Hey, you need to <coughs> utilize that. And, yes, use that information. But I might not. I mean, that same thing comes down to deliverance. It's like when we train people in deliverance, we don't say cut and paste what we do. Yeah, get the fundamentals, but then ask the Holy Spirit, right, how to implement it. You know, it's like I used to think I have to know all the names, all the demons. And, you know, I got caught up in that. Oh, God, you know, what if I don't know all the demons, all the kingdoms? And God says, stop that. that. That has its place. But out of your belly will flow rivers of living water if you be still and quiet. And then when you do deliverance, let me flow through you. Sometimes I'm not going to tell you to call out everything from the mother's side. to the. Sometimes I'm going to. Sometimes I will. Sometimes I won't. But who's who are you going to let establish your thoughts? Right. Who are you going to let, uh, you know, so it's like especially in these times, we have to let the Lord establish our thoughts in everything. Remember we talked about earlier acknowledge him in all your ways how can you acknowledge him in all your ways if you're writing down your own things to do list and and, and the lord said that's this that's a way how a lot of us can get off track even though we're going towards a real good goal why well, know this you don't need to pray about that yes you do yes you do need to pray don't say you don't need to pray about that well that's just common sense i know i need to go here and i know i need to go there you don't know where God, God might want you to go over here to meet somebody, right? And, and sometimes that flat tire, that's of God because he wants you to witness to the triple A guy, <laughs> you know? Ways are stronger than your ways. You're like, this can't be of God. This happened. No, you know? And I find that sometimes it'll happen. I found something, man, this is like a curse. And, Lord, and all of a sudden someone comes and I'm, I got, I, I'm not thinking like, man, what's going on? And then. Lord says, that's who I want you to witness to right there. That guy right there that's coming to help you. Does that make sense? Yep, sure does. Okay. So, and I understand it's late, so you guys can just turn me off anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> Later, where you're at. Offended. <laughs> like, okay, Brother Ray, that's enough. You click off and leave studio. No. <laughs> <laughs> A little too far, but yeah, no, I'm I'm opened up. Anybody want to say anything, or and you got some, you know, food for thought, and, and you know, Holy Spirit speak. I'm, I'm, you know, like I said, just share it. I just, you know, just have a. 
Well, I just want to say thank you so much for what you shared tonight. Um, watching those videos was very enlightening. Um, it's so interesting because even with what was in the videos, it's like, it's, I've already, you know, kind of like seen it before. And I'm sure, I'm pretty sure many of us have that's on here in movies and things like that. Right. Um, especially, especially the one where they were showing the people's faces up real close mm -hmm. um, and knowing everything about everything, you know, and I think to me, it's kind of like a no brainer when you think about Facebook and social media and tr TikTok and all this other stuff, um, you know, where we put in our information, um, yeah. how we're moving from money to, you know, like now you go to the banks and you go to stores, there's a coin shortage, so they say. Right. So you can't even really use coins much anymore because there's supposed to be this coin shortage. I'm like, wow. You know, we see things like this. And you know, that's so true. That's, that's so true. It's like you can't you can't really escape it. You know, people say, I'm not going to get 5G or I'm not going to get. I'm like, 5G is flowing through you every day. 5G is flowing through all of us right now. You can't, you can't avoid it. But thank God that no, I decree no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I believe right. the power of God protects us. Because, you know, a lot of times we could walk in fear and some people say, I'm not putting my stuff on the Internet. I'm like, bro, your stuff's already on the Internet. OK, it doesn't matter. If you got a credit card. It's on the Internet. It's in the system. You know, well, I'm not going to put my stuff in here. It's already there. You know what I'm saying? It's already in the, it's already in the system. We just got to trust God and plead the blood of Jesus. That's right. Over our, you know, over our cards, over our property, yeah, everything and, and over they, everything. Yeah, yeah, even water. Exodus 23, 25. We bless our water because you know a lot of times we're trying to avoid all these things. We got to eat organic, and that's good if you can afford that. But some people can't afford to eat organic, so they're scared to eat anything. No, bless your food. Wash Amen. it. Exodus 23, 25 tells you to take all sickness and disease from our food and water. Because anyway, a lot of times people are trying to avoid this. Don't drink that. That plastic has poison. Then you walk outside, you breathe it all in your body anyway, right? <laughs> Out of the pollution. Everything you're trying to avoid from eating, when you go outside, you're taking it in anyway into your blood system by breathing. So we just have to believe our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continually purifying us and our electromagnetic field, right? We all have electromagnetic field. That's not new age. We do. And I believe the Holy Spirit, right, encompasses our electromagnetic field protecting us, right, from pestilences. Psalms 91 says what? protects us from all pestilences. Radiation is a pestilence. It, it protects us from that. It protects us, you know, uh, like I said, I did that prayer with the vaccine because, you know, people are talking about all the deadly stuff. And I understand that, but when your kids get vaccinated, you don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you can't help that. So I'm like, right. you do that a different way. Like, you know what? You drink any deadly poison will not harm you. I decree that over my kids. And I decree the fire of the Holy Ghost obliterate any trace of vaccine. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, because I was having people coming to me. Yeah, you know, they, they put this in molds and they're all dead. And their pilots are flying in and dying over the steering wheel that have taken this, you know. And I'm like, I don't want to hear all that right now, you know, because that's trying to plant fear in me. Or I didn't take the vaccine, but it plant fear for my, my kids. And people, you know, it's like, I don't believe we should preach a doom message. Right. Like, as the answer, you know, so there it is. There, amen. All right, amen. All right. amen. So you know, whenever you feel led, anybody want to close us out in prayer? <laughs> so, so, unless somebody wants somebody else want to say something, but uh, well, yeah, I just want to say, of fear. yeah, yeah. I just want to say this is awesome that uh, we get to do like this. You know, um, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, we'll continue doing it like this till till uh you know we we'll get the place ready. But at the same time, we'll uh, stream it continually like this as we go. From the new uh the room once the new room gets set up. Right. So this is awesome. This is a great start. And uh, next right. week, Ray, you're teaching again, so we'll be uh re ready for yeah, well, to hear I, 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 I might it. Or hand it off to someone else. You know. <laughs> so. No yeah. need. We're enjoying you talking. We yeah, haven't yeah. heard you teach in a while. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, I have some stuff I've, yeah, I've written out that I wanted to preach, but I don't want to, you know, share, you know, like I said, I want to share too, because I like being ministered to too, you know.
Yeah. So, uh, but uh, yeah, no, right. I, do uh, I do have another message I was going to bring forth. And I'm sorry, today was kind of choppy because I was trying to get all the technical stuff and it didn't really. So I just kind of went off the cuff and didn't really use all my slides and stuff like that. But oh, uh, Brother Ray, you did well. You flowed, it yeah. flowed great. We were yeah, sure. it did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank. Yeah, you. Right. So I just said, you know, but yeah, no, but I think uh, I'm excited what uh, God has in store with, you know, Opie House of Prayer Training Center here. And uh, and I think he's already been working. I've been seeing just what everybody's doing, the testimonies and stuff like that. So it was, you know, praise God for all the testimonies that's been coming forth like what the God is doing, here, you know. Amen. Yeah. All right, who's closing us out? Because I opened us up. <laughs> yeah, who's closing us out? Yeah, right, I see John Lee right. sitting there all quiet. All but these he, prayer warriors. <laughs> I see you. Then I see you. I Hi, like, Brother Ray. Hey. Real <laughs> thumbnail of you. There you go. <laughs> Thank you for tonight. That's the Always a blessing. Okay, praise God. I'm trying to think. Okay. Right. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for tonight. Just uh, bless you, Lord. We just lift up the day to you. We just lift up the teaching to you, God. We just thank you for what we have learned. Yeah. And I uh, just pray that you will give us a peaceful night that no one performed against us and our children will prosper in any way. God, I lift up every one of our child to you. Lift up every one of our kids to you right now that you protect that nothing, no one performed against them will prosper in any way. Lift up our families to you. We lift up everybody that we know that's in, in, uh, close to us. And I lift up the, the ministry aspect, Lord. I just pray that we uh even more people involved from other places that are far away. I'm going to actually do advertisement uh, next week. I'll put on it that we'll have, you know, double the people and we'll just grow the this channel up and it will just be full of people on it in the name of for the weeks to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we just thank you so much. There's no name above your name. I wouldn't serve any other name. Yeah, sure, Mashiach. There's power in the name. There's victory in the name. There's healing in the name. Healing. Anointing in the name. Yes. There is peace in the name. If you would speak aloud. Every knee. Every time.
your hands. Yeah, I talking about it's not a coincidence that you have tuned in to this song that you are here tonight maybe you know him already and if you do I know he's been your provider I know he's touched your body I know he's that God of mercy and we can never come to the full revelation of who he is because he's just the almighty he stands all by himself but I want to encourage those that are lost out there, come and get a piece of this peace and, 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 and mercy and this anointing. You need this power that we're talking about. You need this comfort that we're talking about. You need this anointing that we're talking about on your life. You need this understanding. And I don't know what God you serve, but this is the one and the only God that will help you in and lead you into victory. This is the only name that will lead you into heaven. And so if you without him tonight, I encourage you to grab us by the hand, grab him by the hand and give him your life. He has ultimate power, ultimate peace, supernatural understanding. And so tonight I want to extend my hand to you and offer you that name. Sure, Mashiach, Jesus, my victory, Jesus, my peace. Come tonight won't let you down. 